As I walk through the ruins of my childhood home, the acrid stench of burned wood and plastic filled my nostrils. All that remained were blackened walls and twisted metal that once made up my bedroom. My heart raced as I heard whispers carried on the cold breeze. They seemed to come from nowhere, but I could make out faint words. Touch us. Join us. A chill ran down my spine as memories flooded back to me. It was a warm summer night, and we kids had gathered around a bonfire to watch the annual firework display put on by the town's volunteer fire department. We cheered and clapped, our eyes fixated on the exploding colors illuminating the sky. But little did we know, one errant rocket would change everything. The next thing I remembered was waking up amidst the chaos of flames licking at the trees and houses nearby. I saw my friends lying motionless amongst the debris, some already unconscious while others writhed in agony. Panic set in as I frantically searched for any sign of life, but all I found were charred remains, indistinguishable from the blackened earth. As if in slow motion, I watched helplessly as a burning timber beam crashed onto my legs, trapping me beneath its weight. Pain coursed through my body as I struggled against the inferno, trying not to breathe in the thick smoke suffocating me. My vision blurred as consciousness faded, replaced by haunting images of twisted fingers reaching out towards me. Shadows danced along the walls, resembling gnarled appendages stretching forth to claim me as their own. I realized then that death wasn't coming for me alone. It came for us all. Days passed before I regained consciousness in the hospital, bandaged head to toe and hooked up to machines monitoring my vital signs. As I lay there, I couldn't shake off the eerie feeling of those phantom digits caressing my skin. Even when the nurses attended to me, the sensation persisted as if something sinister reached beyond the grave to ensnare me within its grasps. Weeks turned into months, and eventually news of the tragic event spread throughout the country. Reporters descended upon our quiet community, eager to learn more about the macabre phenomenon dubbed Twitching Limbo. According to witness statements and physical evidence, it seemed whatever force caused the explosion created some kind of supernatural link between the dead and living. Rumors circulated about victims having awoken as possessed shells, tormented by the pain suffered in the afterlife. Some spoke of dark rituals performed during the initial investigation opening portals for lost souls to cross over to this world once again. No matter how preposterous such claims sounded, they somehow brought comfort to those who wanted closure. If only returning to rest meant escaping the malevolent influence of the so-called phantom graspers. Months melted into years without any answers. Despite countless paranormal investigations, none yielded concrete proof of spiritual manifestations. Only vague recordings of disfigured shapes darting through security footage and whispery voices, captured on F devices, hinted at the elusive presences lurking among us. And always, there were those disturbing accounts of bodily ticks and involuntary movements from both locals and visitors alike whenever near the blast site or affected household. One theory proposed a connection to the nervous system, which some unknown energy exploited to manipulate muscles without consent. However, 
no scientific studies provided definitive results. In time, most people grew numb to the odd occurrences around them, choosing instead to focus on rebuilding rather than dwelling on the unknown. Those directly impacted by the catastrophe sought solace elsewhere, hoping to forget their losses in distant lands far removed from the cursed ground that spawned their personal hells. And that's where things stood before the events that led to my return. Six long years since that dreadful July night. It was then that my past caught up with me, literally pulling me back into the maelstrom, promising me the worst experience anyone could imagine. Or perhaps worse, given what lies ahead. That faithful autumn evening, I sat alone in a dimly lit room, surrounded by boxes containing old photographs and mementos salvaged from my former home. Memories rushed back faster than I could process them. Each moment triggering the house was an ordinary two-story structure nestled in a cozy neighborhood with manicured lawns and playgrounds. Hardly anything distinguished it from its neighboring homes except for the infamous history tied to it. Once owned by the family, whose negligence resulted in the accidental missile strike, many considered it cursed. Children playing hide and seek often refused to enter the property, fearing a sense of unease and being tagged first before finding cover behind shrubs or within structures. Grown-ups, too, steered clear, preferring to keep their distance, even though crime rates hadn't increased significantly in the area compared to other parts of the city. Strange stories emerging from the place didn't help either, including reports of creepy whispers emanating from inside, distorted reflections appearing in windows, and objects moving unaided giving credibility to the persistent rumor of twitching limbering within the dilapidated abode. For those who believed otherwise, they argued that pranks and vandalism accounted for these anomalous incidents. But deep down, everyone felt a strange presence watching them from the supposedly abandoned residence waiting patiently for the day someone stumbled across its secrets again. Without realizing it, my hand traced the scar above my left eyebrow, reminding me of how close I'd been to joining my fellow sufferers until fate intervened. That thought triggered another flashback involving eerie encounters experienced by those closest to the mysterious tragedy. Trembling lips muttered, expletives mixed with snatches of conversations, recalling random phrases spoken in alien languages that echoed around the burned homes as if mocking the living. Others described sudden aches affecting various body parts, followed by brief periods of immobility. Numerous instances related to sleepwalking episodes involved individuals discovered wandering aimlessly outside the perimeter of devastated properties bordering Wexwood Park. A commonality linking these unusual accounts was that all affected parties lived within a few blocks radius of Ground Zero, implying something so began my journey into the heart of darkness. The ruined neighborhood surrounding 2349 Sunset Boulevard, the epicenter of the unsolved enigma known, colloquially as Twitching Limbo. As I approached the ghost town, the sun dipped below the horizon line, casting an orange and red sky against the clouds. Shadows grew longer stretching like fingers from every crack along paved roads and sidewalks leading to empty houses with boarded-up windows. 
The silence was deafening save for occasional rustling leaves and creaking wooden shutters swaying softly in the chilly breeze. The hairs on the back of my neck bristled at the sight of overgrown grasses covering driveways, signaling nobody had maintained the outdoor areas here for ages. The lack of life was suffocating but strangely comforting under the circumstances. Fewer people meant less chances of encountering those afflicted by the inexplicable curse. My rational mind continued justifying my fascination with revisiting this graveyard of memories despite the potential risks. An urgency took hold, demanding I confront whatever lay hidden beyond the shattered facades hiding secrets best forgotten. So I kept walking, braving the twilight that promised nothing good awaited in the hours ahead. As the moon rose higher in the starry skies, I neared the derelict properties that defined the centerpiece of my quest. 2315, 2326, 2337, and finally the infamous 2337, and finally the infamous 2349 Sunset Boulevard. Each building sported similar structural damage due to the errant ordinance creating a symphony of broken walls, splintered roof beams, and crumbling brick chimneys. Faint moonlight penetrated the rubble enough to reveal the remains of interior furniture, silhouetted against gaps in collapsed ceilings. Dust danced gracefully when illuminated, resembling tiny spirits reluctant to leave their temporary tombstones. What wasn't visible anymore made me realize how little I knew about lives connected to these now abandoned dwellings. But one memory stayed etched into my, my palms, moistened with sweat, as I reached for the door knocker on 2349 Sunset Boulevard. The house where my journey toward understanding started years ago during a time none of us would ever forget. With tremulous fingers, I rapped three times, unsure whether anyone would hear my knocks through layers of neglect accumulated since the disaster. My breath hitched in anticipation. Adrenaline coursed through my veins, fueling both hope and dread simultaneously. This culminating point marked not only a conclusion to my quest, but also reopening old wounds better left undisturbed. Nonetheless, something compelled me forward, driving me towards answers I might never comprehend fully. After what seemed like an eternity, yet likely lasted no more than ten seconds, the entrance swung open with a creak, inviting me into the unknown. Dim light spilled past a figure obscured behind the partially closed front door, preventing any discernible features from registering immediately. May I come in? I called out hesitantly, uncertainty weighing heavily upon me knowing full well how much painful memories lingered within those four walls. A faint whisper replied, Please do, heart racing. I stepped inside, without further encouragement, anxious to face whatever waited ahead. It was then that the occupant appeared before me, eyes locked onto mine, Expression difficult to read due to, to flickering candlelight playing tricks with my imagination. The air grew thick with an ominous energy, warning me to abandon this foolish endeavor and turn tail while I could. Ignoring instinctual caution, I remained rooted, ready for whatever revelation loomed in the dark corners of the dim room beyond. And so we stood there, frozen in silent dialogue amidst the haunting whispers from the past, eager for knowledge, neither daring nor willing to speak first. 
For just $3 a month, you can have your name featured in my YouTube videos and descriptions. Not only will you be supporting my channel, but you'll also be immortalized in the credits of my content. If you're looking for something a bit more personalized, consider becoming a $25 a month patron. I'll voice your stories and bring them to life on my channel. Create a special drawing just for you, or even write a unique story tailored to your interests. So don't hesitate. Join my Patreon community today and help me keep the spooky stories coming. And remember, together we can save you each other from the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support.